hit it, Phil. Can it be the breeze that fills the trees with rare and magic perfume? Oh, no. It isn't the breeze. It's Jackson time. La, da, da, da. Well, hello again. This is Buck Benny speaking. I am joined with John Henderson and Terry Phillips. And uh, and actually kind of excited this week with Terry because Terry is actually going to be releasing, I think, this week. Right, by the time you hear this, it'll probably already be out there. The uh, episode eight, I guess, of his, or the first episode of the new season, anyway, of Imaginary Theater. It's a two-parter. He's going to release the first part and then a few weeks later release the second part, I think. Terry, anything you want to tell us about that? How did how did putting it together like go recently? And this has been the most challenging episode so far. It's long, uh, longer than any of the others so far. Yeah. Uh, although each each half I cut it in two parts, and each half is about the same length as our prior uh, maximum lengths. And it it has a very complex. Um, uh, series of sound effects music uh, uh, same number of actors basically i think there are five characters in this so it's not um it's not particularly difficult in that sense but it's the also the first time that i've worked with uh, children there are two kids uh in the cast and they i, I was delighted by all of them as, as usual the actors really make it uh, uh work yeah. and uh and so I, I hope that the sound effects and music uh, and the story will uh, will hold up. We'll see. Well, they say I, go ahead. There's go ahead. A, there's a famous quote: "You should never work with children and animals." And you're working with children, and of course, you got those dolphins on set. <laughs> That's right. I violated <laughs> both of those guidelines. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's, that's great. I, I was just going to say, I don't know what it's like. Because I haven't ever written anything and then had someone bring it to life, right? Actors and things. I would think that's a, a unique feeling to go, this is something I created on the page. And now I'm experiencing it coming to life in front of me. What a neat thing to do. I remember the first time I did that. The first play I wrote that was produced, that was uh, performed and directed by other people. And it was thrilling, uh, not because it was my work, but it was because, I mean, that was part of it, of course, but it was because they brought something to it that was completely uh, unexpected. They they yeah. made it, they made it um, real. Before, as you say, it was just yeah, uh, words, just on, words on, on a page, page, and then all of a sudden, there, the whole thing of making plays, making movies, there's. A magical thing to it that is just yep. wonderful and that's you know and jack does that all the time and we see it week out and week out and we talk about it over and over again because we love what he does and we love how his his writers do the thing that they do so it's fantastic and i'm so glad we get to enjoy the thing that you do terry with, with thank you. wonderful performances so thank you thank cool. you so everybody tune into that find that over at uh, imaginary theater um and listen to all the other ones they're all great and they're all short. It's it's really nice because you 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 know you got tw you can invest twenty minutes in almost anything, and it's like oh that's kind of cool. And then you listen to the next one, and they're all different from each other, and they're all different genres, and it's great. So and and this one, if I remember right, because I haven't listened, to it, it's more of the science fiction area. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a it's a family drama. Okay. Uh, and there's a little bit of science fictiony, you know, fantasy fantasy stuff, stuff yeah. going on. I don't know, John. Would you? What genre would you put this in? Uh, well, I haven't finished the episode, so at this right. point, I would put it in the cliffhanger genre. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this episode does end with a cliff. Uh, That's right. So, uh, if you were to get there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> even though you haven't gotten to that part yet. <laughs> <laughs> it was an unexpected cliffhanger this time but that's okay <laughs> uh, that'll be great anyway let's uh switch gears and oh, well first of all john do you have any new things you want to chat about or anything so uh well i uh have been working on an audio book for kathy <laughs> fuller seeley's uh jack benny book and so i've done the first well the introduction and then the first chapter. And each month I'm going to be releasing a new chapter. And I've listened page. to that first chapter. And I've had some issues with it because it doesn't sound like your voice. It sounds like way higher and faster. <laughs> I'm not sure 
if you set the recording speed correctly or something, <laughs> or because you are doing yeah. the narration of the book, right? It's actually my wife who's. Uh, oh, a that <laughs> makes way more sense now. Okay, thank you, John. A wonderful reader. If I was reading the book, it maybe it would, uh, you know, maybe wouldn't be quite as enjoyable. But she's terrific. Uh, yes, yeah, she is. She is, and it's a one. I've, I've he sent samples to us, so I joke, but but he <laughs> but it's really lovely, and it's a wonderful project, and I'm excited about it. So, um, and that's a great book to experience any which way, whether you read it, whether you listen to it, or ideally do both. Then there you go. So yeah, that's exciting, and to get to that, that's on your Patreon, and so you could go Patreon.com/slash This Day Benny. Okay. Or just uh, look up this day in Jack Benny on Google and just click through. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I'll try and remember to do a link to it too. I do sometimes. Yes, I'll never forget. But anyway, we'll do our best. Uh, <laughs> well, let's let's get on to this week's. Everybody's going. When are we going to start this episode? Well, here it is. So uh, <laughs> we we this week we are continuing our trip around the world with Jack and Mary, and this is they're going to Venice, Italy and we get to experience what it's like there. It's a lot different than the other ones. Um, and we'll talk about that as we go in things, but I'll let uh, one of the guys like take us through it. So uh, Terry, I guess we'll get your point of view on it. Um, what what did you notice about this episode? What stood out to you and uh, whatever you want to chat, chat about? Well, this was originally broadcast on March the 10th, 1957. And as you said, it was part of Jack's uh, round the world uh, travelogue uh, series. And uh, I mean, it was the Jack Benny show, but it, it, it was uh, a number, I don't remember how many there were, but a handful of uh, trips that he and Mary Livingston took um, to Europe. Yeah. And the, the premise is that he and Rochester are looking through photographs of his um, the various cities that he visited in Italy, and um, and then we get to see some of those places that he visited. Yeah. the The thing that I find most extraordinary about this episode is, uh, is uh, something that uh, you and I chatted about um, that we all had chatted about before we started recording this, which is that it's a story within a story within a story. It's a very clever design. And so he's talking with Rochester at the beginning, and then uh, we see a little bit of the travel log, and then finally there's a character who tells the story of having met Jack Ben. And then there's a flashback from that, and we go back and forth and back and forth, and it's really cleverly woven together. I That appealed to me. The, the performers in this episode are, for the most part, Europeans. Mm -hmm. um, the character who tells the story says that he's American. He was actually, I think, born in Canada, but he is uh, of Irish origin, I think. A mm -hmm. number of the actors are Italian. Um, one of the actors playing an Italian is actually British. Uh, he was a fairly well-known um, um, British actor named um, Edward Evans. I mean, I didn't know the name, but he was a very um, well-known British actor. And the other thing that I liked about this episode, as with previous episodes, is that we get to hear a lot of people speaking Italian. And they don't subtitle it. They don't translate every word. In context, it all works. And, and being someone who, who likes uh, different languages, I found that to be delightful. And the last thing I want to say is that, from a production point of view, is that once again, it was great to see that they actually did do this in Italy. Uh, and most of it did take place in Venice. But uh, a lot of this was also shot on a soundstage uh, in London. And they did it so seamlessly that I watched it several times. I could not tell what was actually in Italy and what wasn't. I had to guess. But it was really great that, uh, that they did that. It's not done very much anymore on American television. The last series that did it well a lot was I Spy, and that was in the 1960s. Wow. So this is, uh, um, you know, a, a, uh, a style of uh, television production, largely because it's so expensive, uh, that has has uh, fallen by the wayside. So I that was, again, something that appealed to me quite yeah. a bit. Well, and also, overall, it was a very... At the time, 
in 56, 57, when these are being done, yeah. was, was that style being used anywhere else very much? I mean, it seems like this is kind of a, I would think, a unique thing. I guess Isle of Lucy did some well, of this. Well, they would talk about it, but they other places, but I, I don't think that? they actually went. No, I don't think so either. I think, I think they were done in studio and things yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like the it's crushing expensive. of the grapes ones and things i don't think because it's expensive people. you know yeah. and, and they didn't bring their whole crew i'm sure they used a local production company um but still they had to move their cast there and stay in hotels and you know all the stuff that you have to do when you're traveling right and that's why would, on jack's show you only get mary and jack is it, it's the two right. of them that travel or right. not anybody else in the cast but yeah right right that's right huh interesting John, what are your thoughts on this one? Yeah, some of the previous episodes we've done where they're traveling, it's like you get an establishing shot and you can, if you look really closely, you can see Jack Benny in the shot and then they cut to a studio. Whereas this one, especially the gondola parts were very interactive with the actual location, which I thought was really fun and interesting. And I loved like him actually even falling into the water i thought that was great so i thought it was such a fun episode all the way around i i now that you mention it it is kind of odd that there's like these two framing devices where the one guy's telling the story and then you've also got the framing device of rochester telling the pictures but when i was watching it i didn't even think about it i didn't even notice it so yeah it was interesting for you to point that out but also i was able to just go with it i thought it was so fun especially the uh the translation jokes you yes know? i don't speak italian so for me it reminds me of like star wars when you got chewbacca the wookiee talking <laughs> and then han solo translates <laughs> right you know what he's saying and then the translation is is so funny like uh like the part where uh, spoilers the uh gondolier is like giving instructions and talking talking and jack and mary are just looking around and then finally the guy says you're standing on his foot so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i thought that was great there was some i mean and honestly i just am enjoying each one of these episodes just to spend more time with jack and mary because on the show you know you're going to get jack mary intermixed with the cast this is such a unique thing and that you just get the two of them and you feel like well this is kind of a cool intimate thing you're part of um I also i'm just going to throw this out it's a totally bizarre thought that i was thinking as i was watching this but i was going i really enjoy the two of them together and i wish in some ways that they would have done what uh george burns and 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 his wife did which which was to eventually just say okay we're husband and wife it's just the way it is so because i thought right when they transferred into television they were changing the show enough that you would think they could just kind of go you know mary's my wife and 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 just play it that way and that would have made the whole like these vacation episodes much a little give them a little different flavor and all their performances in the show would have gotten a little different flavor. But, you know, I, I respect sure. what they did. Go ahead. As familiar with the television show, but I feel like I remember him mentioning it at the curtain. I feel like when, when they're in the, you know, they open up the curtain and they do the scenes, then maybe they're going back to the old way things are. But then they'll close the curtain and Jack will say something like, oh, you know, in real life, Mary's my wife and, and that sort of thing, where it's like when the curtain is closed and he's standing in front of it, he's more willing to like sort of concede to that, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think that, I think you're right. I think that maybe that was done at a time or two, but um, who knows, it's, it's fine the way it is. It's just always makes it a little strange with the conversations they have about how she's staying one place and he's staying another place. They always kind of kind of establish those kind of things and, but it, it is what it is. But uh, I really enjoyed this one too. And I, and I've enjoyed all of these. I think this is our final official one. Um, Cause um, we already, did we already do the the one in Paris with Maury Chevalier? I think yeah. we did that, right? Yes. Okay. I thought so. I was like, I think I remember Gus doing that one. So I, yeah, I think this is the last one. I'll dig around and see if there's another. But we do have some more adventures to take with Jack internationally because I've got a, a couple more I want to uh, pull out that are not part of this series, but they are things where he was visiting other places and the 
um, in the world and uh, fun to bring up. By the way, there are a couple of little um, cultural references, uh, historical sure. references that might be worth noting. One is a reference to Princess Grace. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason that it was used is that uh, the wedding, uh, Princess Grace and Prince Rainier, had taken place just the year before. So it was yeah. fresh in his minds. And uh, then there was a Hopalong Cassidy reference. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which I thought was hilarious. And again, it was very popular on TV in the 1950s. Oh, do yeah. you all know the, the uh, reference at the beginning when he and Rochester are talking to um, Mucilage? Yeah, I was wondering that myself. I was like, okay, it's, yeah. It's just, know. it was it was a, a another term for glue or yeah. paste. <laughs> and I don't know that anybody would use that word today. No, no. <laughs> That's why it's yeah. hard. It's like I, when they were saying it, I was going, "Musilus, what's that again?" <laughs> then I realized once in the context of the, yeah. of the joke what it was, what they were saying. But yeah, yeah. And yeah. I gotta say, like for years and decades, he's doing his bad violin playing bit, and yet somehow he continues to make it work. Like I felt in this way, like obviously he goes into a violin shop, shop, and it's like, well, maybe he'll play bad violin at some point. But the way that they set it up and they build it up until finally he plays it and and it's just and you'd see the reactions. I am always delighted by that. It's so fun. Yes, I, that that whole bit is kind of interesting because I love the fact that that the proprietor of of the store or whatever uh, pulls down a Stradivarius to to him just a customer and is and and hands it to him and lets him hold on to this. <laughs> 30, this supposedly thirty thousand dollar violin, and then he like goes to help someone else and lays it on the counter there, and Jack picks it up on the counter. And when he picks it up, he kind of fumbles it a little bit. I don't think it was meant to do that, but I was like, oh my gosh, is he going to drop a thirty thousand dollar violin? <laughs> and I know for the show, it probably wasn't a Stradivarius, or if it was, it was Jack's. But uh, I, I just thought because because by this time, I think Jack. I'm pretty sure he had a Stradivarius at this point because I think Jack picked it up. I want to say in the early fifties, so that could have been Jack's violin that we saw, which would be cool. Um, anyway, but I just, I just like, I don't think so. I've been, I've been to music stores where they won't even let you touch their, you know, their most expensive unless you're gonna like truly look like you're actually gonna buy. They're not gonna pull down their five thousand dollar instrument and let you mess around with it. They go. Oh, here's here's the hundred and twenty five dollar version. You can play with this, <laughs> you know. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, I, yeah, good episode. Solid. I think this whole series has been solid. I can uh, I can see how some folks maybe if you're not a huge Jack Benny fan or whatever these 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 travelogue episodes uh, might not a, a, be as appealing. They're not the humor's not as like straight on or whatever as it is on the the show there's more and this one and this one more than any of them as we've mentioned has more like shots of the local scenery of uh which which makes it delightful in that way but it also makes it a little slower moving than some of them too so yeah i think you're definitely right there's some shows that drive my wife nuts cuz she gets so upset at the main character i'm thinking of like curb your enthusiasm right. where she's like stop doing that what you know like that kind of thing the part where jack benny is having everybody in the gondola wait while he goes and buys a hat and they're just like come on jack <laughs> like that's the kind of thing where i think is hilarious especially knowing jack benny's personality and it builds up that tension but that would just drive my wife nuts watching that. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's that struck me too when I was watching this episode. I was going, man, they're making Jack into that tourist that we've all know and we've all seen that it's all about me and I just need to get whatever I get, you know, out of this thing. And uh, and that that's a weird place to put Jack because it's it's like you don't want to like that person, but you like Jack so much, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but Jack is the ugly American in this, in a few, in a few different pieces of this. So, would, yeah. would you all agree that this is another episode where, while you could just listen to it, that there's there's a lot visually going on that you'd miss without watching it? For sure. For sure. Yeah, I would not just listen to this. I would definitely watch it because, like you say, you 
they don't sit here and describe they they describe a little bit about what they're looking at but but to see it is important and uh yeah well i wasn't gonna mention one of the best jokes because i wanted to save it for the actual show so if you're watching on youtube skip forward but if you're just listening <laughs> all right, I'm gonna do the joke. so <laughs> there the, the gondolier says Listen, we, we have a thing where we throw coins into the water and the children dive for it. He throws a coin, the children dive, they cut back, and Jack is missing from the gondola. So right. it's like, he obviously jumped in the water to get well, the coin. Also, didn't we hear kind of a big splash or something before it turned back to him? So we're all thinking, oh, Jack dived in to yeah. get this coin. They do kind of undercut the joke because then there he is standing beside the boat and it turns out he didn't actually jump in. Yes. Yes. There's also a subtle one involving uh, a customer in the violin shop and a ticket that he bought to go to America. And I don't think we should spoil it, but keep an eye out for that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a, there's a lot of good little pieces in here. I, I, I did like it, it. The flow for me was good. I mean, I just think for modern audiences, I think Jack's show can be a little slow anyway for them. And then this is even a, a, a notch slower than Jack's normal shows. But like for me, I just I just want to spend time with Jack and, <laughs> and just and just going around in Venice with Jack and Mary is so worth it to me and I just love it. And so, you know, I'm easy to please though with Jack, obviously. I've done a few of these intros and things. Um for and for John too. So because because we we just I mean I I still am amazed, John how much time you and I spend with Jack and listening to Jack and talking about Jack and that neither of us get sick of it. And both of us are just like, I love this man and I love his presentations. And I mean, I, I don't know. I assume you're in the same boat with that, John. Yeah, there's definitely the thing with the Jack Benny show in particular, where the more you know his character and the other characters in the program, the more you uh, the more you get where the first time you listen, you don't get what's funny about that. And so I, I yeah, I, I feel like the more you listen, the more you can appreciate it and the more you watch. And because he was on the radio and television for a long, long time, decades and decades, you do have these sort of like eras where something new and interesting is coming up because you're in a totally different era. We're in the 50s. We're not in the 30s anymore. Correct. Correct. Yeah, and seeing it through time is is great. I was a little afraid there that I was going to have that build up and throw it off to you, John, and you were going to go, oh, I'm just doing it for the money. I don't I'm like the guy at all right. anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and to get my wife something to do by reading the book. So, hey, you know, that's the way it is. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> folks, enjoy this episode. We'll see you next time. Uh, I, I just love doing these intros. I love presenting these shows to you folks. And, and I will say... I've been getting so many just wonderful, heartfelt comments from people just saying they love what we do. They love this, these intros and listen to them before the before they watch the show, and it gives them a a, a, a lot of um, I, don't, I don't know. It makes them feel good and things, and and that's been delightful. Thank you, all the folks who've commented and things. I don't even think we've ever gotten a bad comment from anybody. I think it's always oh, wait. Good. other than I should let John talk more and I should talk less. But other than that, we, it's all are, good. There, are there people watching these intros? I thought we were just chatting. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Someday I'll put them out there. <laughs> no, they are. They're watching them and, and they seem to be getting we're getting a little more all the time, which is lovely. So and I, I'm almost at 600 like subscribers. And so I'm like, oh that's nice. So yeah, it just keeps uh, inching up and inching up. So yeah. All right, see you folks next time. The Jack Benny Program. You know, Rochester, fixing up the scrapbook of my European trip last summer is a bigger job than I thought it was. Yeah, we've been on it for three days now. Uh-oh, I forgot. We're out of pace. I better go mix some more flour and water. <laughs> out of pace? Wait a minute. When we stopped working last night, we had a half a bowl of pace left. I told you to put it in the icebox. <laughs> That's right. Well, what happened to it? Don't blame me. You're the one who wanted waffles this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I, I did ask for waffles.
Gee, they were good, too. Now, Rochester, get me a bottle of mucilage. It's in the cupboard in the kitchen. <laughs> was that mucilage? What'd you think it was? I thought it was syrup. <laughs> Rochester, you mean the syrup I put on the waffles was... <laughs> what are you laughing at? Your teeth may decay, but they'll never fall out. <laughs> well, we can't glue these in, so we might just as well assort them. Oh, say, boss, where was this picture taken? Oh, that's at the La Scala Opera House in Milan. Right across the square is the most famous violin shop in Italy. It's called Vitelli's. Miss Livingston and I had been sightseeing, but when I saw this violin shop, I, I couldn't resist going in. Dopo tanto tempo, finalmente, io vado in America. Un momento. Un momento, vengo subito. Gosh, look at this place. What atmosphere. You know, Mary, just standing here among these magnificent old violins sends chills up and down my spine. I don't know what you're so excited about. After all, a violin is a violin. Oh, no, Mary, that's where you're wrong. In a place like Vitaly's, violin making is an art. Now take this instrument right here. Isn't that a beauty? Just feel the finish on that woodwork. Every line bears the mark of the Vitaly family craftsmanship. A know-how handed down from generation to generation. Gosh, what a beautiful instrument. It's a cost of fortune. What does it say on the tag? Made in Japan. <laughs> Well, I would have known the difference. It's these darn glasses. They were made in Japan, too. They were not. Buongiorno. How do you do? I'm an Americano. Yes, I'm Jack Benny. Jack Benny. Yeah. One of the truly great violin virtuosos of America. And I'm Grace Kelly, movie star, Princess of Monaco. Now, don't be ridiculous. You started it. All right. It's so funny an American should have come into my shop just now because my friend is a just show me a ticket to America. It's a dream he has had for many years. Well, he must be quite thrilled. <laughs> Have you any other fine instruments that I can look at? Sure, sure. Beside the one we make in the shop, we got the finest collection in all Italy. There's one I'm uh, real proud of. This is a Stradivarius. Gee, a Stradivarius. That's right, Jack. Just think, in 1721, Antonio Stradivarius is a work a day and night for three months to make his instrument. Eh, poverino, he's a sell it for ten dollars. I'll give you fifteen. <laughs> to make the joke, no? No. Right. I mean, Mary. This violin, Mr. Benny, is priced in American money $30,000. You look around. If there's something you like, hey, you let me know. Huh? What a violin. I think it's beautiful. Well, Mary, it isn't the looks. It, the main thing is the tone. Gee, $30,000. <laughs> Jack Benny, he's a living America. You didn't buy anything. Well, not that day, Rochester, but the next day I went back uh, without Miss Livingston and I dickered with the boss of the shop for a few hours and 
We finally made a deal. Then you bought a violin? No, some rosin. <laughs> you mean that's all you bought? That's all I bought. Rochester, a trip to Europe is very, very expensive. You know, transportation, hotel, food and everything. Gee, and I gotta find some way to make up for all that money I spent. See, I can cut down on clothing and entertainment, but, uh... <laughs> Rochester, how much am I paying you? <laughs> Boss, you wanna... You wanna glue this picture in your scrapbook now? I'll glue it in later. Answer my question, how much am I paying you? Let's finish pasting these pictures in the scrapbook. <laughs> All right, let's finish it. <laughs> it works every time. <laughs> Stop giggling and hand me those pictures about Venice. Those are the ones I want, the Venice pictures. There you are. Say, the city of Venice have water every place? Isn't there anything else but canals? Oh, there's a lot more to Venice than canals. You know, Venice is one of the most beautiful cities in Europe. And I live near the Campo San Baldo. There's the Lido across the lagoon. San Marco Square is a fabulous sight. And there's the famous Rialto Bridge across the Grand Canal. He used to love to feed the pigeons in the Campo San Baldo. Could you tell me... Oh, excuse me. Uh, senor, me look for Cafe Sorrento. Cafe Sorrento? Straight. Past bridge to Venezia Palazzo. Oh, thank you. The me tourist, Jack Benny, Hollywood. Me tourist, too. Chief Thundercloud, Oklahoma City. <laughs> Small world. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Let's go. Okay. Mary, what are you staring at? Um, what are those men doing? <laughs> I don't know. It's some kind of an Italian game. <laughs>
wish to sit at the bar? A table. This way, please. We get a sandwich? Yes, certainly, sir. Oh, look, they have hamburgers. Why don't we have some of those? Yeah, bring us a couple of hamburgers. Two hamburgers. Very good. <laughs> Gee, good to sit down. I hope you're through shopping. Almost, but there's something I have to get before I leave Venice. I hear they have the most beautiful leather goods here. Yeah. Mary, what are you staring at? Isn't that the American we saw yesterday? Yeah, yes, it is. I think I'll go over and ask him if he'd like to join us for a break. Okay. Oh, there you are. Hi. Oh, hello. We just came in for a snack and maybe a drink and thought you might like to join us. No, thank you. Um, when I finish this, I'm going back to the hotel to pack. Oh, yes, you're leaving in the morning, aren't you? Yes. Well, have a nice trip. Thank you. <laughs> Signore, in this place, it's so unusual an American who refuses to accept an invitation from a fellow American. Yes, I know. Is he a friend of yours? No, no. <laughs> I only met him yesterday. Yesterday? Yesterday you were here. I remember you ordered the double scotch. Yeah, that was after I met him. <laughs> Look, all right, I'll tell you. Yesterday afternoon, I decided to kill some time, so I thought I'd take a little sightseeing trip. I was standing in line, waiting for the gondola, and he and that young lady were standing, waiting behind me. You'll love this trip, Mary. They say these canals are really something. Uh, pardon me, do you have the correct time? Time? Yes. It's ten minutes to one. Thank you. Are you an American? Yes, yes, I am. When are you going back home? Wednesday. Wednesday? <laughs> it's only two days. Take my advice, buddy, and postpone your departure. Yeah. Well, I think it's ridiculous for anybody to leave Venice without seeing the tinted palaces, the camp at the, 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 the famous bronze horses in St. Mark's Square and Floriana's. But I've already seen those places. Oh. <laughs> and this isn't your first day? No. How long have you been here? Twelve years. <laughs> Incidentally, it isn't Floriani's, it's Florian's. <laughs> and if you don't mind, I'd like to go home Wednesday. Mm. He has to rub it in you. Well, it's your own fault. It is not. Why didn't he tell me how long it was going to be? Well, maybe it felt silly saying, what is the correct time? I've been here 12 years. <laughs> Allora, signori, facciamo una passeggiata con il mezzo più caratteristico di Venezia, la gondola. Le gondole partiranno ogni 10 minuti e ciascuno conterrà 7 persone. What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? What did he say? He said a gondola leaves every 10 minutes and each one holds 7 people. Oh, Mary, let's move up close so that we, we can get on the first boat. Excuse me. <laughs> Prima di iniziare questa passeggiata voglio illustrarvi alcune bellezze di Venezia. Qui a sinistra quest'uomo mi sta pestando i piedi. Hey. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? How do I know what he said? In vent'anni che faccio il conduttore non ho mai trovato un animale come questo e continuo a pestarmi i piedi. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> Se lo picchio e gli rompe il naso perde il posto e mi pesta sempre il piede. What is what he say? What he say? What you understand Italian? What he say? He said you're standing on his foot. Oh, <laughs> 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 Mary. 
Mary, Mary, save a seat for me. I want to get one of those gondolier hats. But Jack, you haven't got time. It'll only take a minute. I want to get one of these hats, please. Uh, Jack, we're starting to go. I'll be with you in a minute, Mary. Let me try this other one. Here. Thank you. Thank you. I'm coming. Mary! Mary! Americano. Sí. Says to get back in the boat, he wants to get started. Back in the boat? Is he crazy? He's soaking wet. If he goes on the trip now, I'll catch a terrible cold. Or even pneumonia. Tell him I want my money back. Questa gente il colio rimborsa il biglietto. No, quando il biglietto è venduto non c'è rimborso. He says once you buy a ticket, you can't get your money back. You can? No. Well. Jack, what about your health? Mary, you gotta gamble once in a while. Signore, signore, adesso stiamo percorrendo il Canal Grande. Se ammirate attorno, potete guardare i famosi palazzi storici di Venezia. Da questa parte la grandiosa piazza San Marco. Stop squirming around. Well, I'm uncomfortable. I think my suit's wrong. <laughs> anyway, I... Bye. Bless you. Thank you. I think I'll be more comfortable over there. Jack, be careful or you'll fall in the water again. Well, I don't know why they build these boats like this. This one's too narrow. What do you mean, too narrow? You fell off the Queen Mary. <laughs> Only once. <laughs> He says this is one of the most romantic spots in Venice, the Campo San Baldo. Campo San Baldo? Wait a minute, according to my guidebook, we're not supposed to reach San Baldo until after we see the gritty palace. Now, why do we skip that? I'll find out. Per che il passe gritty palazzo? Perché quando questo signore è cascato in acqua, abbiamo ritardato la passeggiata. Ciò bisogna recuperare. That when you fell in the water, it delayed the tour, and now he has to make up time to keep on schedule. I don't care about his schedule. I paid 400 lira for the sightseeing trip and an extra 100 for the blanket. And I'm going to have 400 liras worth of sightseeing. I know my rights. After all, I'm an American citizen. Jack, you promised the State Department you wouldn't tell anybody. I didn't promise. I said I'd think about it. Questi ragazzini sono qua perché i gondolieri buttano le monete nell'acqua per buona fortuna. He says the reason the children are here is because this is the spot where every gondolier throws a coin in the water for good luck and the children die for it. Oh. Auguro buona salute alla mia famiglia e buona fortuna alla mia gondola. You know, that's one of the nicest... Yeah! Here I am, Mary. Well, when I heard that splash, I thought maybe... Mary, how could you? <laughs> Heavens to Betsy. I just came up here to take a picture. Caroni dipinti con i colori degli stemmi dei proprietari. I palazzi con architettura che vanno dal bizantino al gotico al rinascimento. He says we're in a side canal now, but we're going to the Grand Canal, where we will pass the Cafe Sorrento, one of the most popular cocktail lounges in Venice. You know, Jack, I hear they have over 400 bridges in Venice, and wait some a of them... Wait a minute, Mary. 
the guy just threw me into a great joke I mentioned in the cocktail lounge. I'll be able to do it on my television show next year. I get this. Wait a minute, get this. Listen, guy, stop. Stop. Wait a minute, I want you to hear this. Everybody, I want you to listen to this. See, I'll say that Frank Rimley, my guitar player, was in Venice with me. And we went into this cocktail lounge, and Frankie sat down with one of the natives. So Frankie took a drink, and the native took a drink, and Rimley took another drink, and then the native, and Rimley, then native, Rimley, then the native, until finally the native couldn't see anymore. <laughs> What's so funny about that? Mary, don't you get it? Rimley is the first guy to ever drink a Venetian blind. <laughs> Sakes, why didn't somebody tell me when we got to the bridge that the tide was in? At least they could, could, achoo! You soon, guy. Thank you. Signori e signori, la nostra passeggiata è finita. Sbarcheremo la riva in cui siamo partiti. Prego, sbarcarci. I'd still be swimming. That was a good sandwich. Yeah, let's go. Mary, I can't understand why that American didn't come over and have a drink with us. Well, I don't blame him after what happened yesterday. I think you ought to go over and apologize. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, before we leave, I wanted to tell you how terribly sorry I am about what happened yesterday. Oh, that's all right. Incidentally, I was too modest to mention it before, but I happen to be Jack Benny, star of stage, screen, and... Oh, thank you. He said, break a leg. <laughs> Yeah. Sounds so nice in Italian. 